All right, this is week four of 12 blended families class. This one is placement of the mantle. Okay, we're going to be talking about some of the roles and responsibilities, but <coughs> basically how God set things up for a godly home and family. Um, excuse me for all my coughing ahead of time. What is a mantle? Well, the mantle was the robe worn by a prophet. It was the official, like, my ID card. If I have this garment on, that means I'm a prophet. So it was something that designated and people could tell that, oh, that guy's a prophet. Look at the robe he's got on. Right? So it was kind of like his ID badge. And it signified his sacrifice and commitment to God. People could tell from a distance who that guy was. Okay? <coughs> now, there's not that many places in the Bible where it talks about a mantle, but one of the, the better ones is 2 Kings 2.13, and that's where Elijah... Elijah is being carried off into heaven in a fiery chariot. And he throws down his robe because Elisha had asked for a double portion of what Elijah had. So as he's being carried off, he throws down his mantle. Elisha picks it up and puts it on, and then he becomes a prophet in, in, uh, in the way that Elijah was. Um, in a blended family, a very, very common problem is who's going to wear the mantle? The mantle is the mantle of leadership. Okay? Now, depending on how old you are, <coughs> you may remember <coughs> sorry, a couple of TV shows. One was called Who's the Boss? And that one, it was, I don't know, back in the 80s or 90s where there was a, a female executive and she had a guy as her, like her nanny, sort of, right? That was called Who's the Boss? And then there was another one <coughs> that's called Married with Children. So in a blended family, you're basically going from Who's the Boss to Married with Children. Mm -hmm. You have, in most cases, two single parents. It's not always... A single parent. I mean, a lot of single people without kids marry somebody with kids. Okay, but <coughs> sorry. In this, case, in a blended family, a high number have kids on both ends, right? And they've been single for a while, so now they've been used to calling the shots. They're the boss in their family and they hadn't had to check with anybody, you know, is this okay with you? I'm just doing it, right? But now you're in a relationship with somebody else and they have kids. So now you have to figure out who's, who's gonna wear the mantle here. And once you've been wearing it, it's not that easy to take it off and give it up, okay? So, <clears throat> That's a big problem in a blended family, is trying to figure that out. Um, people's <coughs> parenting styles are different. You know, the, we talked the last week about celebrating differences and so forth. Um, and, you know, we all have what we think is a, a normal normal. And our way is the right way. But just because it's how we see it doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just different. So, <coughs> now, who, who's going to wear the mantle of leadership? That's the big question. It takes communication. It takes some effort. It takes you know, submitting one to another, you know, those kind of things, to be able to figure out how all that's going to work. Um, in a blended family, you know, like, if, if the guy just says, well, I'm the guy, so I'm going to be the head, 
because that's the way it's supposed to be, and then he just starts kind of being a dictator. That's not going to work. I thought you were. <laughs> never mind. It's not? Same thing. No, never no. mind. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right, but, so, you know, there's, there's a challenge here. So we need to go back to the Garden of Eden after the fall to kind of see where a lot of this conflict comes from. Okay, so after sin entered the garden, God cursed the ground so that Adam would basically have to work the land. He'd have to work for a living. Yeah. I mean, he had, he, he had a job to do, but he didn't really have to work that hard. He basically just had to go around and pick the fruit. It was there, and it was perfect, and there weren't any thorns and thistles and weeds and all that. It was all right, exactly the way God wanted it to be. He did have to tend it, but he didn't really have to overcome a whole lot of stuff. Now, God cursed the ground. It's going to have thistles and thorns and briar patches and all these kind of things that were going to be in the way of being able to grow what needed to be grown. So, through the sweat of his brow, Adam was going to have to start working to provide. And it's interesting that God cursed the ground. He didn't curse Adam, but he did curse Eve. And there was going to be pain in childbirth and a desire to have authority over her husband. But she would have to submit to him. So right there is conflict in marriage from the get-go. Okay, her desire for her husband basically is the desire to be the head, to at least be equal in authority, if not more so. <clears throat> but that was part of the curse. So you know from. From the beginning, there's always been kind of a conflict. You know, the, the, the guy was cursed to have to work. It's not like, oh, yay, I get to work. You know, it's, I have to. And hers was pain in childbirth, and then her nature was going to want to be in charge, but she wasn't going to be the authority. So... It was going to have to take the Holy Spirit to be able to do that. Because the flesh is not going to want to be what God wanted. <clears throat> we look at 1 Corinthians 11.7. Man is the image, okay, image and glory <coughs> of God. And woman is the glory of the man. So man was created in the image of God for the glory of God. Woman was created as the helpmeet of the man and is the glory of the man. And a lot of the things we're looking at today is, some of it is you know, what the husband is supposed to be doing and a godly relationship and a family and everything, but a lot of it also is trying to show how God created the woman and what her role was to be in this entity of a family. So, okay, man is the image and glory of God, woman is the glory of man, but because of the curse, the woman would rather be her own glory and not the glory of the man. You know, it's that whole being submissive thing. I want to be the boss. You know, you're no better than I am. I want to be in charge here. But that's not the way God set it up. Okay. Um, Karen, you want to come up for a second? Okay. Now, okay, this, this jacket represents the mantle, the mantle of leadership, okay, as, as the husband. I'm supposed to be the prophet, priest, and king, and all these kind of things. But being that I tend to be lazy 
you know, it's like, you know, this, this gets heavy and you know, the responsibility and everything else that goes with it, it's kind of, it gets hard to wear sometimes. So <clears throat> what usually happens is us guys will, you know, I don't want to wear this anymore, so we'll just lay it down, okay? But this is what happens. The wife comes along and says, well, if you're not going to wear it, I will, you know? <laughs> Because of the curse, right? Her desire is going to want to be to wear it. But obviously it's not really meant for her to wear. Doesn't but, fit. But somebody has to wear it. Well, that's... And if that's, you're not going to be the proper priest and king, then we yeah, have to we, wear you know, it. The shoulders are too wide, the sleeves are too long. It, it just was not meant for her to wear. Yes? I just want to chime in on that, this particular subject because what often happens, what I see is, you know, you hear, um, like later on in, in the chapter, it talks about, you know, happy wife, you know, happy, happy life. life. Right. <laughs> so, you know, where, and if you, I talk to certain men or, you know, about their relationships, and sometimes they just say, you know, just don't say anything. Right, just just leave it. Um, so it's very easy if you don't understand how you were made and how to be Christ-centered, focus on the role. It's really easy to hand over that mantle. Oh yeah. Even unconsciously, even uh, yeah, even as in yeah, I don't want to deal with it. But it's, it's more important than for both to really, if they're really, really, really committed to, to understanding those particular roles and what's going on, <clears throat> that's the only way you can really attack um, this piece here. Yeah. But it's, it's easy to, to, to give it up, you know? Yeah. Well, it's our nature, yeah. right? From the sin, the, our nature is guys want to give it up. Right. And the women want to take it. Anyway. Anyway. So I mean, oh, yeah. kind of how oh, we're no. built. Your mom's got it. So yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> go out and down. Right. And a lot of people don't know that the guy is really supposed to be the head of the family. And he that's his job to wear the mantle. That's why Christ has designed him to be have the mantle. We didn't know. Well, um, I was just talking to a guy on the phone last night. And... He's married to a gal who had a stepdad, but he worked all the time, so he wasn't really present, and so the mom was in charge of everything, right? right? Somebody has to do it, yeah. So that's her normal. Mom does everything. The wife does everything. She's in charge, and that's where they're having issues is trying to do this who's going to wear the mantle thing. Because her normal in her head is the wife does everything. She's the leader. That's all she knows. That's her normal. But the guy knows this other stuff, right? He knows he's <coughs> supposed, to. supposed to be the head. He's, he, he's, he knows he's supposed to be responsible for all this stuff. But She won't give it to him. <coughs> she's like, uh, no. Yeah. And what happens is when they talk about it, get, they get resentful amongst each other, mm -hmm. you know, because the wife's like, well, I'm doing it, I'm covering it, but wait a minute, he's the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so then it becomes this, this cycle. Oh, yeah, right. Exactly. This, and that's <coughs> gerbil will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good point. Because that's how it works, mm -hmm. right? You, you think it would be great because that's what both people kind of want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to give it up. She wants to take it. It should be great. Yeah. But the resentment comes in because we know we should be doing the other thing. Mm -hmm. How God even created us. Even if you don't know, you're going to act up because yeah. and that's where the disconnect, where you have to connect those two people. Okay, this is how I was created. Yeah, and that's, that's what we're kind of trying to do here is go back to the creation mm -hmm. and see how God intended yeah. you know, for the man to be this person and do these things and the wife was created to do these things in this way and you know we were created with a purpose for certain things mm -hmm. 
Sorry. So we go back to the how <coughs> sin entered, and then our nature is kind of the opposite of what God really expects of us. And without the Holy Spirit, we can't do what God wants us to do. Mm-hmm. So it's it's I mean because the curse is built in <coughs> conflict and when it's a blended family, it, it's even more noticeable because now both parties are used to being in charge mm-hmm. and they, you know, the, the wife is going to have to figure out how do I transition my leadership over my kids yeah. to this other person, you know, how, how does that work? And that was another part of the thing with this guy last night. There was absolutely no way I'm going to put you ahead of my kids. Mm-hmm. Just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's not going to work. Right. It's just not. So, you know, that's that's the whole point of this over here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <coughs> sorry. Okay, so man is the image and glory of God. Woman is the glory of the man. And if we can understand our place, how God did things, you know, sometimes it's not what we want, but that's what God created. You know, it's it's not my idea. (laughs) That's the way God set it up. Okay, so the more we try to do what God created us to do, the better it's going to work. Okay. Proverbs 14.1, a wise woman builds her house. A foolish woman tears hers down with her own hands. And words. And words. <coughs> um, a lot to be said there. The, the wise woman understands where she came from and why she is here, what her purpose in life is. She understands that. So the wise woman is edifying the people in her home, building up the husband, building up the kids, uh, you know, taking care of stuff. The foolish one is yip, 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 complaining, nagging, uh, you're an idiot, those kind of things. She doesn't understand her purpose. She's still in the flesh for the most part. She wants to be the boss. And so... She's assuming authority that was never given to her. So um, it's going to be a problem. Larry, on that, uh, <coughs> um, going back, if the man is not doing his part, it's going to be natural. Someone wants to rule. So, right. Um, so it, it, it requires both parties doing their part. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, the woman has her part to play. Yeah, and she stays in her role, then... Hopefully he can walk in his role. Right. But and I wanted to say that, you know, um, in our society, it's easy. Well, I shouldn't just say our society. When we talk about family, it's easy for women to take on that role if the man is gone and working 10 to 12 hours. He's responsible for the kids. Mm-hmm. If he um, is, you know, not um, needing help. I, what did I just say? Because I'm thinking about Dave Ramsey. Whichever one is has a strong suit of the finances, and if the woman is the one that can give her more of that power, and so learning how to stay in this the God's order is really, um, like you said, needs the help of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Right, and um, when when the husband is like laying down the mantle or just not stepping up to where he should be, there's like a vacuum there, right? And one of those principles in the universe is nature hates a vacuum. And we'll fill it. it. Something always is trying to fill the vacuum. Usually there's something else. You know, it's like the vacuum cleaners. You know, so it's always sucking something in there. Um, and when the husband's not doing his job, there's a, at least somewhat of a vacuum created, so the wife is going to try to fill that void. And, uh, but 
if she under if she's the wise woman, she'll understand. Maybe I need to help build him up to where he feels confident to be able to fill the role. I have another example. There's this lady that she was a, a pastor. She's a apostolic pastor of her own church. But this is what the, um, they said when she passed away. They said that even though she was the pastor of their church and her husband supported her, when he came to their home, he was the head of their home. Mm -hmm. And so she was able to be that wise woman. She was able to keep that balance between those two right. roles. She didn't let that role interfere with the role <coughs> that God had ordained her to walk in right. in, her, in her home. So that was a really beautiful testimony yeah. of her yeah. being able to be a wise woman right. and build her house. And, you know, obviously... You know, the, the older we get, the wiser we should be. And so, you know, the Bible's pretty clear about, you know, the, the older folks trying to teach the younger folks, you know, about life, you know, about God. Well, and, and we got to remember, too, Larry, that our kids are going to catch what's done in the home. And right. we are, too, even though we had it wrong in the past, now that we got it right to continue doing it right, so when they um, end up in a relationship and get married and have children of their own, they, they are taught to, to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we had 23 years of marriage. We didn't know how to do this. We hadn't even heard of this. Mm -hmm. Well, then, we wouldn't, as far as we knew, nobody, I mean, there weren't any classes to go to on how to be a yeah. blended family. We, we didn't know. We just saw what our folks did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in my heart of hearts, I always wanted my husband to lead the house. Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. um, but when, like when you came into to our world, um, you instantly, yeah, you instantly <laughs> were a stepdad to three kids, mm -hmm. which was a big shoes to fill right there. But um, you said you deal with them. I'll be here. I'll show them how I love you, and you know because we were in love, and we'll just make it work. Mm -hmm. But um, that's, we didn't know that wasn't God's plan, not his full plan. You know, right, we had no idea. Right. Uh, but we still did some things right. We did. By accident. Then <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, like, like what you were saying, you know, it was like, kind of like Ephesians 5.33, I was loving her, and she was respecting me, and we had no idea that that's what the scripture said. It was just we were that's kind of what we were doing, because it, it seemed like the right thing to do. Right? Yeah, whenever the kids and it would, was whenever the kids would come to me and ask for something, I would always tell them I need to check with Larry, mm -hmm. whether it be for a ten dollar item or or what. I would always emphasize I need to you know, to check with Larry, mm -hmm. and yeah, we did that by accident. <laughs> yeah, it just, you know, it just seemed like that was the way it should be. Yeah. Right. And it was, we just didn't know why. Lawrence, uh, How did the kids take it, like the stepkids? They felt they were fine with it. When you said, I need to check, you know. They were fine often, with it. Okay. Uh, you know, um, our daughter was four, um, and then our son was almost 15, and my daughter was 17. And... Um, they, they, were, they were fine, they just, okay, fine, whatever, you know, mom, you're the boss, you've been the boss forever, so whatever you say boss. goes, uh, they did not question, they did not question. They didn't question her. The, no. the only reason why I brought that up is I can remember when my stepdad you know, came into my life, and then, you know, nothing's ever really explained or talked about, and, you know, that's your mom, and... The relationship you have with your mother is very is different from the relationship that you have with the step parent. Mm -hmm. So when 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 they have to you know check in with somebody else, you know I could re remember you know saying, okay, I don't know what that's all about. But so the point here I'm want to make is that it's in something that I remember. It's good to to really include. Your children in all of this, so they know what, right. how God wants it, not necessarily how the mother or the stepdad right. wants it, but in order for this to work, this is going to be a good, healthy way of living a life as a family. And, but true. it should be talked to the kids about it. 
right. just as much yeah, as you're doing that little transition. Right. Yeah, one of, it would have been great if we had known this in the beginning. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but one of the things we did right when we first got married, uh, we got married just before Christmas, and it was um, Larry's idea to bring up the, um, the thing of goals, goal setting for the family. And, I mean, we'd just been a family for two, two weeks. And uh, he made the kids all be part of it, too. I thought, yeah, I, each one of you kids, I want you to have three goals, a short-range goal, a medium-range goal, and a long-range goal, and come up with an idea as to where you would like us to take a family vacation this year. And then we'll all discuss it and vote on it and see you know, who, who wins and what we're going to do, and also an item that we need to purchase as a family. I had never heard of goal setting. And I thought, okay, well, that's cool. We'll do that. And to this day, our kids do that with their kids. And they think that was really impacted us a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the four-year-old, she got a, She found out real quick. She had a short-range goal, and hers was like a $10 item, which she got an allowance for to help her with the trash and anything else I needed her to do. And... Hers was one of those heads that had a hair that they could, like a Barbie head that you could, Mr. you know, do the, do the hair and do the makeup and stuff. And so at that time, they didn't have computers, so we had pictures. We had them cut pictures out of, out of the catalogs and stuff, and we'd put them on a poster board, and they'd put them in their room. And so when they'd get one of their goals, they could take it off. Well, she got real smart. Oh, she thought she did. <laughs> and she got the short one, so she replaces it with another short one. Which, no, no, no. That's not how it works. You got the short one. That's awesome. <coughs> now we have to wait a little longer to get the next one. Huh. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> you know, to her. But that's how you teach them. But I thought, how awesome to give the kids something that they're part of also and something that they have to shoot for and the one family thing everybody agreed on was to buy a new car for me. Our family car, we would stop at a light and the front bumper might fall off or I'd park somewhere and then shut it off and it would still run. So I needed help with my car. So I think it, yes, it was in August and we got married in December. And we would do an Amway. Larry was already in it uh, before we got married. And, of course, together we, we built a great Amway business. But we were uh, coming home from a meeting one night and in August. So we got, had mar got married in December, and this was August. And um, our son was there. <coughs> and he was 15 at the time. And we said, we want you to go out in the backyard and, and look uh, what we just bought today before our Amway meeting. And he went out there and uh, saw a new car for me. Yeah. It wasn't brand new, but it was, hey, it was new to me. Mm -hmm. It was, oh gosh, beautiful white Ford Thunderbird, <gasps> padded roof, you know, the white padded, all baby blue inside with <laughs> the carpet and, and all white leather seats. Had 14,000 miles on it, a moonroof. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I was in heaven. And Moral, our son, went out there and looked at that. And yeah, it was like he had to look two or three times. He didn't believe it. He came in and he hugged Larry. And he said, you did it. You did it. And it didn't even take a year. Right. Here it is August, and we got it till December. Right. What are you going to do the rest of the year? Larry is awesome. <laughs> Just coast. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, these kids, it doesn't matter what age they are. You know, when you try to show them how things are supposed to be, and we didn't know any of that. That's why this, a lot of this information came from what we learned mm -hmm. from being in marriage classes and going to seminars and conferences and, and mistakes and our life experiences <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we learned a thing or two along the way, but mostly the hard way. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so the wise woman builds her house. That includes the husband, the kids, uh, you know, speaking life into all the different relationships, not speaking death and destruction. Um, and the, what we usually hear these days is behind every great man is a great woman. I mean, you hear it all the time. And for the most part, it is very, very true. There's a very strong woman, <clears throat> but one that understands what the role of a wife is, right? That helpmate, right? And so that's kind of where that comes from. <clears throat> Proverbs 21, 19, uh, as you said, Lawrence, if, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. <laughs> All right? Or actually it says, it's better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, I mean, really, who, who wants to live with somebody that's angry and argumentative all the time? Right. I don't know anybody. But, you know, we go back to these things over here where you know, the wife has kind of wanted to be in charge and now she's kind of bitter that the husband isn't really doing his job and she kind of resents the fact that she has to be in charge because somebody has to. Mm -hmm. But it creates bitterness eventually. <laughs> so that's what you end up with. Yeah. Okay. Um, Husbands are supposed to be the coverer. You know, they're prophets. That's this kind of a prophet. <laughs> uh, priests, the king, they should be. The prophet speaks the word. Okay. The priest is the spiritual covering, keeping things in prayer, mm -hmm. and the king is the one that guides, guards, and governs. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. The wife is the nurturer. She's Kind of the teacher, keeping you know, keeping things intact in home. <coughs> uh, Proverbs thirty-one talks about the wife that has her own little business on the side, right? <laughs> she's she's bringing in some, some money. <coughs> That's part of her help week duties. Yeah, it's you know, I mean, she's not just sitting around eating bonbons, watching TV. Okay, I mean, she's busy doing stuff, being productive. Uh, yeah, you know, make you know, the, the quilting and you know, or coming up with some new chocolate chip cookie or you know, some, some but running a business, mm -hmm. right? Very smart, mm -hmm. business oriented. Um, but also the nurturer and teacher. Uh, okay, pretty good. Um, in the home, it's sort of like. A corporation, if you want to look at it that way. Okay, you have God at the top. He's the chairman of the board. He is the top dog. He is the one that sets the vision for this operation. He gives it. He doesn't really have to ask anybody for their input. He says, here's what the vision is. Here's what this operation is going to do. Okay, so the husband is, and this is, you know, supposed to be, he is supposed to be the CEO, the chief executive officer. He is supposed to report directly to the chairman and receive the vision that the chairman has established. So he has to receive it, but he reports up. Now, he's the CEO, chief executive officer. The wife is the chief operating officer. Okay? Still part of the executive team. Okay? The husband, as the CEO, shares the vision that he got from the chairman with the COO, and together they develop the mission based on the vision and come up with all the different little tasks that need to be done to accomplish the mission. And then the COO, the wife, shares all the different tasks, the vision, the mission, the tasks, with the employees or the kids. 
Uh, you can't fire the kids, though. <laughs> you know, if they if they screw up, then there's some sort of discipline that needs to come into place. But uh, generally, they're like the employees. Uh, you have to kind of keep your eye on them, right? Make sure they're doing their job. But the COO then ensures that's part of that executive responsibility to make sure that these tasks that were agreed upon up here are getting done. So that's that's kind of how we represent, you know, a godly family, the roles and responsibilities of the various people in it, and you know, God's always at the top. But in the other class, we talked the different kinds of submission and stuff. It's, it's similar to this, but uh, we represent it with, you know, each person has their own relationship with God, and then one to another, and then after all that, the wife to the husband. So um, that's, uh, that's pretty much everything I had today. Any other comments, questions? So the CFO is interchangeable with those two or 50-50, you think? Uh, to be determined. <laughs> uh, who, who has the better gift? <laughs> right. it's the, the CEO is responsible for the big yeah, picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then after that, it's who's good at it. Right. Right. So, yeah, in our house, I have to know where the money is and how much there is. Mm -hmm. And when it comes time to pay the bills, I got to make sure there's enough there. Right. But she's the one that keeps reminding me right. when they're due. Right. right. Sometimes she'll put a check in the mail. Sometimes I pay it online. So 50/50. Yeah, it's it's just it's a shared responsibility. Yeah. But ultimately, the husband God is going to hold him accountable. Right. Accountable and responsible. Mm -hmm. Right. The wife is accountable but not necessarily responsible. Right. So there's accountability on both parts, but the husband, you know, God's going to say, hey, you're the one that I held accountable for that, and you're the one that's responsible to make sure it works. Mm -hmm. right. um, yeah. and, um, <coughs> I, I got two topics, but anyway, um, with um, the one in teaching this, I there was a, my daughter had a friend that, you know, had this all mixed up, and she was getting resentful and angry, and being the breadwinner, and so, and in, in trying to give them, you know, the wisdom of God, I said, well, um, and they've been doing it for several years, almost 10 years, Right. I said, well, she needs to be willing to let him step up and be the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. That was a scary place for her to be in. Sure. She could not do it. Because she's been doing it for all that many years. Yeah, right. That's how and I, it's yeah. back here. That, that's the problem. Yeah. Right. And so I said, well, you're going to continue to have this until you get this in order. And that's that, a very know. scary thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, especially for the women mm -hmm. that, I mean, it's yeah. kind of their nature to want to be, in, be the leader anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they've been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. And they like it, mm -hmm. you know. And then they get into a relationship with somebody else. Now they're married. You know, I got kids. You got kids. I have to trust you to take care of all this. Yeah. I don't think so. But then there's the contention of why don't they get a job? Well, because well, you're doing. It. <laughs> you know, you want to get a job, you're going to have to be willing to back up a little bit. And that was that was just too scary of a place for her to be in because yeah. um, they those had ingrained <coughs> themselves in. In this, you know, this disorder. Yes. It's, it's, oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. No. But I, so just light bulbs popping in my brain. <laughs> um, now it, you you can see why so many, if you see so many, um, I don't want to say powerful but successful women, mm -hmm. always have the worst boyfriend, <laughs> like the guys with no job, and they're always complaining. Yeah. The guys with no jobs, the ones that they can control. Yeah. Um, that are bad for them, and they're all. If you if you see this common 
thing, thing that theme that happens, and it's interesting. It's all all of this <laughs> right, right here. here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they. They don't want to give that up. backwards. They, they, don't, they don't even want it. the guy they're with, but they can control him. Right. So, yeah. you know, he's only good for a few things, and that's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Finances right. isn't one of them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, like I try to <coughs> teach um, couples, you know, with this uh, CEO and CEO, you know, you guys get together and figure out, you know, hash out what you need to hash out, kind of like you guys came in an agreement. Come in an agreement, and then you have a united forefront with your kids. We, you we don't come it. with that division. Right. Because the children will take advantage of you, <coughs> and oh, yeah. the bottom line is they're going to rule the household. Yeah. And, and the divided so, house will not stand. Exactly. And so you hash out whatever, decide what you're going to decide on, and then come, and then, um, you know, Present that to the kids in in one accord, in a mm -hmm. joint, united front. Kind of like you were saying, well, I'm going to talk to Larry about that. Mm -hmm. um, what, one of the things we've seen a lot, and I always thought it was so cool to see people do the unity candle at a wedding, right? So here's your candle, here's your candle, now you come together and you both light the big candle, mm -hmm. and then you blow out your candle. Everybody goes back and lights their own candle right. up again, sooner or later, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it all gets back to people really desire to be an individual, right? Me. I, I need to be me, right? <coughs> Marriage is, and it took me a, a year and a half yeah. to see me as <coughs> us. Right? Even when I was talking to people, it's so all, I do this, or I do that. And, oh, yeah, and, and Carol's over there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just, I get the look. Right? Yeah, I didn't have to say anything. <coughs> Excuse me. But it, it, it took me, I mean, I was the only kid for 14 years. And then I finally got a sister. So I, I was used to my whole life just doing my own thing, you know, thinking about me and whatever I was doing. But, you know, being married, married with children, you know, it was still hard to picture myself as Mary. And, and it's not just me anymore. It's us. So, you know, it takes a while to get that head wrapped around the fact that there's another part of me here. And, you know, like with finances, everybody... One of the first things we did was combine the finances, mm -hmm. you know. I was pretty good at keeping the checkbook, you know, down to the penny or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, you put in an ESP somewhere every now and then, it's like error someplace, <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> just like start over, <laughs> make an adjustment, you know, 50 cents here or two dollars there, you know, just to get it to balance. But <coughs> I think we went to my bank first. You had a tattle on you. Uh, not that it really matters where we went first, but I went. So we were going to close out our personal accounts. This is when we got married. And yeah. Yeah, within a week or so, right? Yeah. Closing out our personal accounts. Now, I had been a single mom with three kids working two jobs. <laughs> I had to do whatever I had to do to survive. Right. <laughs> and back okay. then, yeah. you could float a check for a day or two. Yeah. And right? I so used that. You write your checks on Wednesday, you put them in the mail on Thursday, you get paid on Friday, you're good. Yes. Right? So that doesn't work so much anymore. Uh, but we, we went to my bank, and I had forgotten to write in a $200 deposit. Can you imagine? Only a single guy would do that, right? Didn't miss it. I mean, I had every penny. So, I, <laughs> bonus, right? So, and then we go to hers, and it took like $80 or $100 just to cover all the overdraft charges. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was kind of a wash almost. But, you know. So, but yeah, I mean, that the overdraft charges were killing her. 
but you know, you're trying to survive. Right. It's you and three kids. And then he cut my lifeline off. <laughs> Give me your credit card. <laughs> cut it up. <gasps> I said, are you kidding me? I mean, Jacques Penet, J.C. Penney, right. was my lifeline. <laughs> I, I, I can't use, are you kidding? He said, for six months, Carol, we need to get things right. Mm -hmm. And he cut up my credit card. <gasps> I about died. We did it. We did it. But he was 100% correct. But I had never had anybody come out, because I'd always had to do it myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had been taking care of my own expenses since I was like 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I was 12, I had three jobs. Mm -hmm. And then I got married at 19, and ended, you know, and I was married twice when we got married, and um, three kids. So I mean, I was a survivor. Mm -hmm. I did whatever I had to do to survive. But, um, yeah, I have never had anyone come in and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Then, then I've, oh, but that was scary. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when, man. When you go from a mentality of, I got to do what I got to do to survive, right? to now you're married, and there's somebody that's providing, mm -hmm. what do I do with that? <laughs> you know, I mean, you're still in survivor mode. Go shopping. Yeah, and I trust I <laughs> So, we yeah, did. it was, I mean, I, I had a good job. I was a computer programmer at American Airlines at the time. Uh, when we first got married, I moved in with them. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my own house, but it was a small house. I think their apartment was bigger than my house. I lived in low-income housing. Mm -hmm. That's where I was. But my girlfriend was the manager, and I got it approved to stay there for six months mm -hmm. till the spring. Um, at, at because otherwise the we wouldn't have been able rent to. Was, mm -hmm. yeah. Which was still extremely cheap. Mm -hmm. And so my, my 280Z looked a little weird in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you had the 280? Mm. The 77. And then go dark, yeah. But, uh, oh, and a motorcycle. <laughs> and a motorcycle. There you go. But, uh, yeah, I, I, your toys, right? I wanted to comment on the, the Proverbs 2119. Yeah. There is a dwell in wilderness and the contentious anger women, um, you know, and like you said, that, that does make sense because if you're angry and content, contentious, you're resentful, mm -hmm. you know, no wonder the guy doesn't come home. No wonder he's out all night. Right. Or if he's not going working out. Working all uh, day. Yeah, or working all day. Or and with nice. the buddies or, or, you know, out somewhere. Uh, or in the video game. Mm -hmm. Just so he can have this piece of time to himself to get away from this contentious, angry woman. Yeah. And so if you want your, you know, if you want that guy to be engaged, you know, do what the scripture says and be that wise well, woman to build yeah, that yeah. house. Well, but getting things back in order, the way right. the Lord yeah, said that. It's, yeah. it's all about order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God this, is a God of order. In this year, yeah. You know, and when things are out of order, there's stress. Yeah. And it's, strife. Yeah. And it's a scary place. You know, like I said, if you've been doing it for several years to undo something you've been doing. Yeah. It's a scary place it's, to be in. It's hard to unbreak habits or to break old bad habits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's <coughs> especially these days. Even in the church, they don't really talk about these kind of things that much. No. Right. right. So we are way away from the basics mm -hmm. of married life. Mm -hmm. Right. Third, fourth generation now where it's been a broken home, mm -hmm. the father's not been there, mom's had to do everything, mm -hmm. and but that's our nature mm -hmm. to live like that, right? So if if we know bottom line, if we know what God intended for us to do, mm -hmm. the reason we exist in God's kingdom. As, as citizens of God's kingdom, mm -hmm. then men understand or should <coughs> that they're the prophet, priest, and king. And they have duties in each one of those categories. You know, the pro like I said, prophets speak the word. They're speaking the word over the family at the right. dinner table. You know, they're quoting a scripture here and there. 
They're leading the family in prayer at the dinner table, probably again, right? Or just first thing in the morning, they're on their knees, they're covering the whole household. And then they're the ones that God is holding responsible and accountable for what's happening in the family. And then the wife has her duties, right? To build her house and not tear it down. Manage the kids, make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do, respecting the husband, making sure the kids understand they're supposed to respect their father, you know, and all that stuff. There's jobs to do. And when we do our job, God blesses it. When we're trying to do the other person's job, God's not so keen on that. Now you can do it, but somebody's going to resent it. Either you're going to resent having to do the other person's job, or they're going to resent the fact you're doing theirs or something. So, well, it's uh, quarter after. Any other last comments, questions? Sarah, did you, were you checking back at your notes? Was there something you saw that we didn't cover? I was trying to find the scripture in the Bible about the husband being the priest, but I couldn't find it, and I've heard of I've heard it over and over all my whole life, but I was just looking for it. Uh, and I know. Well, I, I don't know that there's one that specifically states a husband is supposed to be the priest, but mm -hmm. when you put everything in context, <laughs> you know, we're all really supposed to be priests. Yeah. I gave her the example of Ephesians where Christ is the head of the church, and so because of his role as prophet, priest, and king of the body of Christ. Yeah. That's true. And then the husband is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, we're supposed to be Christ-like. Yeah. So. But it still comes that's under... My issue. <laughs> it still comes under God, you know, getting orders yeah. from God. Sure. Okay. Anybody else? Ron, how are we doing? Any, any notes that uh, you have that we didn't uh, say this week? Uh... No, I, I like the last part where the husband and wife, the husband's the prophet, king and priest, and the wife is the nurturer. We have a job to do. We all have our roles. Yeah. When God created us, he gave us a purpose. Mm -hmm. He didn't just make us just to be here and take up space. You know, we're supposed to take dominion. We're supposed to be warriors, right? Mm -hmm. When, especially as guys, gals too, but... Whenever we become a Christian, we have volunteered to be a warrior in God's army. Amen. It's a military thing. Amen. Right? Like There's a battle we fight. <laughs> and we're to serve. We're to, and it starts at home. We're to serve one another. And then we're to serve others. Um, you know, when Jesus came here, he didn't come to be served. He came here to serve. And we're supposed to be like an extension of him to help others find find God, Christ, and uh, to know their place in the world. And when it's all about us, that's when we get in trouble. It's not about us. It's somebody else. I, I a lot of times, when people call and ask for counseling, um, they say, oh, I had the worst day of my life, and this happened, and that happened, and da 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 Well, you know what? Go on out and do something for somebody else. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? You didn't hear what I said? This happened, that happened. I said, that's when you need to go out and help somebody else. When you've had a bad day, you can forget about your day when you're helping someone else, which is what you're supposed to be doing anyway. Amen. We're all here to serve, not be served. It's not about us. The world does not revolve around me. It revolves around... You know, I, I do have one quick point that um, that just came up too. If anybody's having any doubts about how this is all supposed to work, God created men and women extremely, extremely different. And you don't even have to look at biblical publications. If you look at anything that has to do with the way men and women think, and I'll, I'll bring up a point. And men think that comic, the Christian comics that you guys share, the video, that little five-minute clip, I, I, I share it all the time. 
Mm-hmm. About the brains? Um, about the brains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mark Gunger. Gunger. Yeah. yeah. That is really, really, really <laughs> awesome. If anybody hasn't seen that one, check it out. Actually, um, we'll have that next week. Next oh. week, it's in the class. Okay. Um, but it depicts the way men and women's brains think. Mm-hmm. And that's something that is a creation. A woman thinks very, very differently from a man. And they can multi they think about 101 different things all <laughs> at one time. Um, which means they're good at being that COO. You know, guys think in boxes, as it's, mm-hmm. you'll see next yeah. week. They, you know, we got one track, and it's that plan, get it done. And I often see in our, our when our <clears throat> dealing, you know, I always get frustrated if she's on the phone, but she's really paying attention and she knows what's going on, but she's doing her multitasking. multitasking. And yesterday yeah. she said, you know what, Lawrence, I multitask. That's what I do. <laughs> I do, and, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm listening, we're going, and blah, blah, blah. And so, if, again, the, my point is I wanted to say that we are created differently. God created us, and he created women, and they think totally different. Men do things totally, totally different. But once you then figure out how that they interconnect, that's when you can really understand and believe what this message is all about. Right. Awesome. She's a great COO person. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Awesome. Great. Okay. And CEO right now, actually. <laughs> Are we going to do a closing prayer?